What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you enjoy what I do, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and also be sure to hit that notification bell so you can be made aware as new content becomes available. In this video, I want to show you two fader port features, which from the best of my understanding are undocumented features, and I find them really, really useful. In addition, let's also take a look at some miscellaneous tips that I have. Okay, tip number one, having the ability to sync your fader port with exactly what you see in your Studio One arrange window and console. Okay, what do I mean by that? Okay, let's take a look at the way we have things set up. I've got my console open and you'll see that edit remote bank is lit up in blue. Now you can see down here that I have the all button selected, meaning that I'm seeing all of the different channels. Now we have options to filter out looking at just the audio tracks. We can look at virtual instruments, bus channels, uh, VCA channels, and then we have secondary functions too. So I could, for example, just take a look at inputs, or I could take a look at MIDI, or I could take a look at just my outputs, but all is uh, the default way that we can look at everything, if you will. But there's one thing that really kind of bugs me. In when you're using the all mode, let's say that you work the way that I do, which is that you have a folder track that's linked to a bus channel or a VCA. Now, when you're in the all mode, I want to basically have access to this, but notice that as I select this channel and this channel, that all of these are taking up space on my fader port. Now, it might be that I really would like to have access to them if I ever need to adjust any of those elements in the mix, but maybe I've already spent time doing that and I just want to be able to adjust these on the bus level. So for that reason, we have a secondary function. If we click shift and we click all, this is the user mode. And what this does is this basically locks your fader port eight or your fader port 16 to exactly what's visible in the Studio One window. So now when I go through and scroll through these different channels over here, you can see that they are just following the folder tracks. And even though there's all these other tracks that are underneath, I have a one-to-one -one parity or a one-to-one -one grouping or linking with what my fader port sees and what's on my Studio One screen. Okay, now the other thing that I've done, and this is going to kind of hover over into a tip, is because of the way I have this set up, it's obviously very useful to be able to open and close these folder tracks so that we can expose these tracks if ever I need to adjust anything. So I've basically mapped out this function over here with my Shift F5. So I'm able to do that directly from the fader port, and I don't need to actually touch a mouse to do that. So that's something that's really, really useful. And if I hold down Shift, and I select multiple folder tracks that are linked to bus groups, I can bring those all in and out together. So really, really useful feature for me. Okay, the next feature we're gonna take a look at is let's select our percussion bus. Now, if we go to the Edit Plugins tab, you'll notice that we have all these different plugins. So I've got my VU meter, I've got my SSL compressor, I've got soft tube tape, I have my tube tech Pultec emulation, and I have an Oxford limiter. Now, that action to me, of having to push edit plugins to select this one and go back and forth, I find that to be quite tedious. And this is something that I actually discovered by accident, is that if you have a plugin window open and the tabs are in focus, you don't actually have to use the edit plugins menu to get back so you can scroll to different plugins. As long as this is open and the plugin tab is in focus and it's assigned to the fader port, you can use the pan param knob and I can move back while this is open so here's my SSL compressor, here's my soft tube tape, here's my Pultec, here's my Oxford limiter, and I find that it has less of a lag than when I use the other methods. So that's tip number two, is being able to scroll through all of the different tabs and bring them into focus when you have the edit plugins initiated. Just use the pan param knob and you can scroll through those and you don't have to continuously toggle back and forth between those two features. Okay, next up, I want to take a look at the way I have a couple of my shortcuts set up. So let's go to the external and I'm going to double click fader port 16. Now, by default, this comes and ships and it's mapped out some basic functions within Studio One. And I'd say for the most part, those are usable. But there's some other ways that we can adjust things. You can make this work however you want. So for example, if we take a look at what I have, I have my Shift and F1 mapped out to toggle floating windows. We'll come back to that in a second. Suspend all groups is mapped out to Shift F2. My console is F3, my toggle console size is F4, and then expand folder track, 
We've gone through that already. And then I have an option to collapse all tracks. So if I open something up and all the folders are open, I can very quickly get through that. Next up, we have an option to add VCA for selected channels, and then I have a zoom to fill. So let's take a look at all of these in action, or at least a couple of them. So let's say that I have some folder tracks open and I'm kind of been busy doing some work. Maybe I'm doing some mixing and I need to really quickly collapse everything and bring myself back. I can collapse everything like that. Very, very easy for me to do that. And now everything's collapsed and now I can use my channel mode and I can navigate through anything that I want to do. Now, another thing that I do is I know a lot of you see me do my zoom to fill command. So let's close our mixer first of all. That's one thing that I find to be useful. My shift F3 is for my mixer and that kind of matches the Studio One's default mapping. And then we have shift F4, which is my toggling large and small mixer. And then after that, so let's close this for a moment again. Another one that I like to use, and this is something that I added recently, is let's say that I'm, let's bring back our mixer just for a moment. Let's say that I have these channels selected. We'll bring that into focus. Let's say that I wanted to be able to control these, but really quickly, these are associated with the group. So I want to control their level, but I need to get out really quickly. So what I can do is I have an option to basically suspend all groups. So let's fire that off quickly. And then I'm going to quickly add a VCA. And now my VCA is in focus. And this allows me to mix really quick without having to go into the actual computer. Now, if you use buses more than VCAs, you could easily, easily replace that command with the uh, create bus for selected channels. But that's like a super quick function that I can use really, really quickly. If I need to see everything and scroll it into view right now, again, I have my trusty macro that's been programmed that gives me my zoom to fill. So any function that you have, if it's a shortcut, if it's a macro, anything at all, if we double click this external devices tab, you can program any of these. Oh, so take a look at this one up here. I didn't even realize I had that programmed. The thing that I do a lot is using VCAs with channels, but I actually have the user three button, which is right over here. I have that set for add bus for selected channels. Now, I also have another one set which closes any floating window. So that one is going to be shift F1. That'll toggle any floating windows that are open. And that could be for multiple plugins if you wanted to. So going back to the same example, we created a VCA channels for these, but maybe I want to also take these and I want to create a bus channel. So in that case, I'm going to use this one over here. So now I have a bus channel for these three tracks. And I also have that VCA that I've created. And you could easily take one of these and, you know, pack folder or something like that, whatever you want to do. It's just a really, really powerful way to work with the fader port. Now, another thing that I find to be really, really useful is if we scroll over, let's scroll over to a track, maybe one of these ones over here. We'll bring this into focus. If I wanted to open up the plugin window, if there are any plugins on this track, Instead of coming in and either opening up this tab and double clicking something like that or opening up the inspector, which maybe it's not open, if you hold down shift and click open, which is the macro tab, this green button over here, this will hide and close that channel editor. So we will automatically see the plugins. Once we have the plugins in focus, if we click our edit plugins tab, once we start selecting these plugins on this particular channel, we can also use the pan param knob to scroll through these. And then of course, I can close this channel editor by clicking my shift and macro. So just to recap, two undocumented features, having the ability to sync your fader port with your Studio One window, uh, a range window or console, however you want to look at it. In addition to that, the different ways that we can filter out all the individual track types, being able to scroll through the plugins by using the pan param knob when the plugins are active like that, and then just map out anything that you want. Find a way to work that works for you. Map it out into shortcuts. You can link these to macros or any shortcuts in Studio One. And after you kind of adjust to it and acclimate yourself to a new way of working, I think you'll find that it's a really awesome workflow booster, being able to map things out and have all these shortcuts with your fader port. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.